go ahead. Oh, no, I'm going to put my hand on the bottom. Cal yeah, stand like this. this. How's this? Like? How's my plan? <laughs> Let's not drop it. <laughs> In the summertime, you know, you get through your season, and for me, the first couple of years, you were in New York before I, and you're still taking in how the enormity of this town, you know? I mean, it's it's playing in the NHL is great anywhere, but New York's New York, and I remember walking down Broadway or something and talking about what the team needed to do to get to the next level and everything else, and, uh, you know, you start to take inventory of what you did during the year and what you have to do for next year, and, you know, like, could you, could you imagine what it would look like to win in this town? Because, you know, no places are fun, but New York with the celebrations. And, you know, it was probably a year or two later that we entered training camp with Keenan. And one of the things he did, or Coley put it together, Coley Campbell, was kind of showing Ranger clips. But they uh, spliced in the parade from the Mets when they won it. So it was really gave you a good feel of exactly what it would look like. And, by the way, it was kind of mm -hmm. the Kenya heroes. And I think, too, at that time, we would, we had come in and the team was at a kind of not a rebuilding, sure. but there was a team that was struggling to get into the playoffs, but then was starting to make advances each yeah. year. And Adam came on board, and and Mess was there, and and uh, Boop came, and we were getting yeah. players that had won Stanley Cups before yeah. as part of the group, and we could see and we'd listen to the experienced guys that had been through it and the excitement they went through, and now we're in the biggest city that's on the drought of winning it, yeah. and we've been there from the beginning, so we, had, we could see that the possibility was coming, and we knew what it was going to, what it could mean, and to be a part of that. So I thought that was, you know, just part of that quick evolution from yeah. being a team where you're happy. We were happy to be in the NHL, trying to figure out For our spot. Sure. All of a sudden, like, can you imagine winning here? And getting these guys, especially the Edmonton guys, but that's just a lot of years of experience and, mm -hmm. you know, what's it like and how long is it and going? And Adam had won as a young kid, you know, when exactly. they won in 90, yeah. right? Yeah. With Edmonton, you are part of that and kid I remember line. some of the, the questions, because they had signed just before Mark had come here and some of the questions around Mark coming. And then uh, just, the, you know, the mentality that Mark uh, brought and uh, the 50 years that we had to listen to every time yeah. we went into an opposing team's yeah. Yeah. building. And then his, his old mindset is that <clears throat> this is what we're here for. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Yeah. Let's, yeah. Not, let's put it at the forefront instead of trying to, you know, dance around it, right. uh, talk about it, and get after it. Sure. And, it, and I think it, that, that uh, confidence kind of, uh, I think it uh, really seeped through it into all of our, mind, you know, our mindsets and the way we thought. And I, I can remember you talking about that, where you had such a good talent at group in Edmonton and how they would be, you know, they're dedicated guys during the year, but once playoffs came, it was a whole other level. And you get guys in the weight room and how they were approaching it. And it was just, you know, for us, it gave us a lot of confidence. You guys had been through it, and now you're part of our team and you're helping us. And wherever we have questions, there was just that, there, was, there wasn't just a hanging question. This is what we did, and it worked. And, you know, we, each team has to figure it out for themselves, but that was a real confidence builder for us, for and, sure. And, again, because we're, we're the same age, and, and uh, uh, I remember playing against Leachy in the under-18s and that uh, uh, guys like Kevin Lowell and Craig McTavish that have been around for, for so long and Tick and, and guys like that. And I was the same way when I first went into to Edmonton in, uh, you know, a couple years previous because I was only there for the last one. Mm -hmm. And it was those same things that we were, and, and to a degree, I was, in, I was enjoying and enduring and, and kind of listening at the same time because I certainly didn't, I was a young guy, I didn't yeah. have all the answers. So um, it was a great journey and yeah, something as a, a young player to be surrounded by those types of guys For sure. with that kind of experience and certainly the, you know, the big guy leading the way, number 11. It uh, made, made things a heck of a lot easier as far as trying to understand what it, what it takes to, 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 to be a champion. And yeah, and I, I think what you said, too, there was, you know, Mark wasn't afraid to say it. There's a picture of the cup in our locker room. This wasn't something you danced around. He said, own it. This is what we're here for. And uh, I think Kevin Lowe had a good line. Someone said, you know, when he was traded, he's like, you know, it's been... 53 years or whatever it was since uh, we last won when he came. I can't remember what the number was. And he's like, it's been that long? And he's like, yeah, what do you think of that? You know, fans kind of get on you. And he said, I think there's a lot of upside. <laughs> and, you know, it's that kind of confidence that he had and that, and that all you guys brought was, was good. He just said it's an opportunity. And it, and it obviously was, just like we were talking about, take it full circle. I mean, no better place to win it than New York. It's so much fun. Yeah. I can remember finally holding the cup. And I was like, yeah, yeah. 
whoa, this thing's heavy. Who wants to hold this thing? <laughs> my shoulder hurts. Yeah, my, my shoulder hurts. just came out. I'm about to fall down. I'm going to embarrass myself. Who wants this? The waiting is over. The New York Rangers are the Stanley Cup champions. Well, for me, it was as much uh, relief was the initial <laughs> yeah. feeling. Uh, you know, a lot of... Uh, just releasing of, of pent up energy, you know, not so much excitement, of course we were excited, yeah. but it was like the, the satisfaction yeah. and then the relief that we had reached our goal and, you know, then the enjoyment kind of seeped in as we were starting to look around yeah. and celebrate and you saw your teammates' reactions, you saw the fans' reactions, yeah. um, you just started really thinking about what we just accomplished, you know, at the time it's get through the third period, and it's get through the last 10 minutes, and it's get through your last few shifts. Yep. And we took it right down to this last few face-offs, kept <laughs> down and then back, down and All then back. All part of the plan. Yeah. So no, but we, that, and that, <clears throat> if you remember that entire uh, playoffs, but particularly that last series, had a couple late goals on both sides. Yeah. So, you know, we iced the puck, and it didn't look like it was icing. Yeah, I can't remember whether it was Burre, who's the fastest player in the world. It's like, I just can't get to that puck, mm -hmm. you know. It's like... They called it an icing, in, in our opinion, it shouldn't have been. And, of course, then they put some clicks back on the clock. And right. we had had, you know, late goal scored, so it wasn't over until it's over, as it never is. But I think you're exactly right, Brian. I mean, you have a job to do, and we we're trying to get through that job and, you know, the intensity of the moment and all that. But then you kind of keep experiencing in different ways. Like, I remember you going off and uh, winning the Con Smythe and then taking a call from the president. And... But then you see some of the guys like the locker room attendants and just different fans and then your family and each of them are experiencing it in different ways. You know, we had never, you know, had that happen. And, of course, it means something to each of those, all those people that are there had their own story that this was a, you know, tremendous moment. So it was kind of really cool to share with them, mm -hmm. you know. You obviously want to do it with the guys in the locker room, but the whole town seemed to have their own story, you know, each person. And the energy of the building, and, crazy. And going in at the beginning of of the game, and Jan, John Amarante singing, you couldn't, you couldn't hear. You, you, yeah. you just see him mouthing the words. Yeah. You, you, yeah. you couldn't. And and the energy, and certainly, uh, you know, the, the Garden crowd chanting, "We want the cup." Yeah. And, yeah. And New York, New York, before the game, and it's and crazy. Uh, those are the memories. And and, and even going down, as Leachy said, down into the last five minutes, uh, the last uh, you know four or five icings, and. Mm -hmm. But that's the only way it could go down after that <laughs> long and all the, yeah. the different stories that you had heard. Yeah. And when the, the buzzer did, it was just like, uh, as Brian said, relief, but, uh, you know, exuberance. And, yeah, uh, every and, emotion, really. Yeah. But yeah. I just remember this, the relief, the satisfaction, and then just yeah. you start to realize you're tired. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> you know? true. I figured it out the next day. Well, there's an emotional, like, For sure, let up go. energy that you let Big go. Time. And then you start to have, wow, I'm kind of physically fatigued as well as emotionally. <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's all. so true. And if you look at the pictures, you know, Grave, you had black eye, your nose <laughs> all over the place, and you get married in a couple of weeks. I mean, guys, you know, it's it's a long war that you're going mm -hmm. through there, and you are tired. I can remember finally holding the cup, and I was like, yeah, yeah. Whoa, this thing's, thing's heavy. Who heavy. wants to hold this thing? <laughs> my shoulder hurts. Yeah, my, my shoulder just came out. I'm about to fall down. I'm going to embarrass myself. Who wants this? Uh, <laughs> but it, it, it it's you're, you're pressing you know, day in, day out, and you're on that routine, you know, would we play 23 games, so it's like you were kind of burying your head and just playing, so it was only after the fact that you start taking it all in, and mm -hmm. even in the last five minutes, the riot police came out and surrounded the, the ice surface, and then by the time you finally get out of the garden, which was pretty late, it was just like a giant party out in the street, the lights mm -hmm. are on there, and people were great about it, it was, you know, no, nothing was burning, there's no cars, because mm -hmm. no one knew how they were going to mm -hmm. react. That's but great. New York was awesome with it. It was just, it was like a big love fest. Everybody was happy and it was, you know, you couldn't have, you couldn't have written up much better. better, you know. The first bit of celebration is obviously on the ice and that's an amazing thing. You get to celebrate with the fans in the arena and, and I thought it was so cool, Mark, you know, kind of symbolically going over to the fans and people are touching and all that kind of stuff. But each guy gets their turn with it. And then in the locker room is a whole nother thing um, because now you're sharing it with, just your teammates and, and the organization and some family members, and it's a really kind of great intimate thing. I remember trying to get back in the locker room after an interview, and this big guys at the door, and like I'm kind of pushing and pushing. Finally, the guys give me an elbow. It was Noon's brother, <laughs> and it was got torn in half by this guy. He's like, "Who the? 
oh, you, you can go. I still have some pads on. <laughs> but we stayed in the locker room for a long, long time and just, you know, shared it with each other. And then I think we had some kind of reception upstairs, if I remember. And I don't even know what time we got up there. But by the time you're leaving the garden, it's got to be 2 o'clock in the morning or something like that. And then you realize... I really don't have to go to bed. Uh, you know, there's no practice tomorrow. There's no next game. There's nothing to focus on. And that's a funny feeling after doing that for a couple months. And we went out to a little uh, hangout in the Upper East Side uh, with a bunch of friends. And uh, seemed like a lot more than just a couple friends. <laughs> the whole street was <laughs> cordoned off. And, but it was awesome. You know, we went out and had uh, a few drinks and just relaxed with family and friends and fans. And, you know, I think, you know, got back the next day or something and had breakfast and it was going back to my apartment uh, sometime the next morning you know the the pictures are on the paper and that's when you start going wow you know it's just this big thing there's just different layers of uh of kind of i don't know processing it that you had you know within your room the locker room and your family and friends and then the city and it started getting bigger and bigger and i shook his hand and i said to him you're one hell of a hockey player good luck to you you remember that? Yeah, you wished me good luck in the draft. And yeah. I, I stopped in line. And yeah, I was, like, I, was oh, uh, I don't think my voice had dropped. Yeah, yeah. I like, Thanks, Adam. <laughs> I'd heard a lot about, uh, about Mike, and I also heard a little bit uh, just from Chris King and some of the other guys that I play with in Detroit, sure. were buddies, yeah. of just what a good guy he was, and, uh, and friendly and, and funny and all the things that uh, I admire and had been lucky enough to enjoy for decades. Um, so, and, and I will take you to when I met him for the first time was, I signed as a free agent at the time, it was a group one, it was, it's yeah. no longer in the CBA. Yeah. Uh, and the, my first day after I had signed, I think it was September 3rd of 91, I walked into the Rangers Alumni Golf Tournament and to a man, everyone on the team didn't know that I had signed. They were looking at me like, <laughs> what are you doing here? <laughs> um, so to make a long story short, uh, I went through training camp and they were trying to figure out who was going as compensation. Troy oh, Millette right, ended up yeah. going the other way, yep. which was a difficult situation, but they couldn't have made it any, uh, any better. And that was the first time I had met Mike. Uh, Brian, on the other hand, uh, I had uh, met uh, in an under-18 uh, tournament that we played uh, in, uh, at the uh, National Training Center in Colorado, mm -hmm. Colorado Springs, I believe. Yeah. And I'll never forget it because uh, I was on Team Canada. He was on the, the U.S. team. I think in a two-game set, I don't want to skew the scores, but it was pr probably something like 9-4 uh, and 11-6 uh, or something like that. Yeah. that close. <laughs> yeah, no, it was, it, but the funny part was, the funny better. part was, and, and Leachy will, and, and Leach will agree with this, the funny part was, is we had our way with it. It was either Canada had the puck or Brian Leach had the puck. <laughs> and we shake hands after the second game, and I remember because Leachy had the long curly blonde hair or whatever with the, the mask on, and I shook his hand and I said to him, you're one hell of a hockey player, good luck to you. Well, you remember that, yeah, You wished me good luck in the draft, and yeah. I, I stopped in line. And yeah, I was like, I was. Uh, uh, I don't think my voice had dropped. Yeah, I was yeah. like, Thanks, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I'll never forget. And then watching them from from afar. So I I knew uh, I knew Brian, and, and certainly mm -hmm. from the draft because we were the same draft year. He's much older than I am, of course. But uh, uh, coming to New York and getting to, to know both these guys, um, I'm smiling because we had so many. And to this day. There's not a time where we don't get together. We don't laugh and smile and have fun, and, and it's 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 like family. It was like a myth. These guys playing out west, and Adam's the nicest guy in the world. He, he kept being described as a as a Rick Tockett, you know, young, strong guy who could score, and everybody loved him. And I remember you coming to New York, and in the practices, um, working so hard after practice, you know, just banking off the crossbar, doing whatever you need to do, just taking extra reps uh, to, to score. And you didn't score a lot the first year you came in the early part, and he's still just totally level-headed and great. And there's a ton of pressure on a guy like that who's changed, uh, you know, teams as a free agent and has come with a lot of, you know, I guess expectations and nothing but what everybody had said, you know, a great guy on and off the ice. and. You know, we'd have lunch a lot, and the young guys would go out, and Adam was just such a nice guy. And then you see him in a game where, you know, somebody on the other team crosses the line, and Adam steps in, and it's a totally different character. You know, doing exactly what you should do to stand up for your teammates, but you don't want to be on the receiving end of it. And uh, I can remember um, my wife saying, oh, my gosh, Adam's such a nice guy. 
and Mess looks at her and says, you never going into a corner with him. And uh, <laughs> it's just so there was this kind of, uh, you know, I don't think it's inconsistent. He's just full of duty and he does what he does. You know, he's there for the team and um, not a better guy to have uh, have your back. So, uh, um, but yeah, just, just as advertised, that myth was an absolute reality when it came to New York. It was, it was uh, fun to watch it happen. In some ways, though, his, his personality is very similar off the ice as it is on the ice because it's all about on the ice is is doing your job the best you can, you know, with intensity and for the team, all about the team. And I think when he's off the ice, it's the same way, whether it's working in practice, yeah. it's his belief in his family, um, his belief in community. And I know you got a lot of that from your family and from your upbringing and responsibilities, but you still have that same passion. You do it with a smile on your face off the ice and you do it with um, all the emotion that you can see inside, but when you're, you're we're teammates with you, you know I sat next to you all that time. I know how much it meant to you hmm. to see one of your teammates get run over, and you felt responsibilities. And if you would, didn't get in there, or you felt like you were letting all of us down. It wasn't like you were letting yourself down. You were letting everybody else around you down, and that's the same way you felt off the ice. And so that's really the difference I see. Is off the ice, you did it with a smile. A, a handshake, an easy handshake, and a, a yes, I can do that, or I can help you with that. And on the ice, he did it much firmer <laughs> and much more direct than what you needed to do to be a good teammate and to play that role and, you know, to become an all-star and to become, you know, one of our most important players on that team. I only got one shot at the finals, yeah. uh, you know, and we were able to win it here and, and win it uh, as a New York Ranger and do it at Madison Square Garden, just very fortunate. The thing that I remember is just um, how much fun it was to be at the rink yeah. and how, how, like there wasn't a day that went by almost where you weren't in the dressing room, in the locker room, and you weren't laughing and almost crying, you were laughing so hard. And the camaraderie yeah. and, 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 and that, and, and also the commitment to work. And, sure. and I'll never forget uh, Mike's uh, stretching regiment and after games where he would have ice packs and the, and, and the way he would take care of himself and his dedication to uh, uh, his craft was second to, second to none. Uh, but he was just such a great teammate and so much of anything in life is, is the journey yep. and what you bring and, and for, 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 for me and, I'm, and, and I know for, for Brian and all our teammates, the, the best part was is that you knew that Ricky was going to bring positive energy. He's a good man. He was someone that you wanted to be around. He respected the game, respected his teammates. And uh, it was just so much fun. It made you want to get to the rink that much quicker. The funny part was, I was always out stretching. You guys were sitting around laughing. I'm the guy who put all the muscles. So <laughs> maybe I had it wrong. <laughs> Got all the ice packs on. And I don't know if it was because how intense you were in the mental aspects of it and focusing for game days and preparation and on the ice. But when you were off the ice, it was like you needed to release some of that. And so we always used to say Mike's jokes were more quantity over quality and I, know he would just I, know, I actually never said that and I, Mike, I, I thought they were both and Mike would laugh at his own jokes and then laugh harder because no one else was laughing yeah. and then eventually I'd be over there shaking my head and yeah. I'd start laughing and then he'd laugh at me because I'm I'd laughing, laugh at, you laughing at, at his jokes and then he'd say the, another the best one. part was so I mean you had to think it was you know a little square locker room in Rye where we'd practice every day but I sat next to Glenn Healy and I could come up there with my best effort and everybody's like oh, it's kind of crickets and then Heels would be like he picked that up and he'd say it, and everybody would be like, "Whoa, buddy, that's really rich." And I was like, "But you'd, just have, you'd do that same look or something <laughs> too," and I'd laugh at you. And I'd be laughing at heels, and I'd look over at Leach, and he's just, like, yeah. yeah, it was uh, it was a fun locker room, man, and and I think that's uh, the thing we all you know miss and are excited about getting back together as a as a group for this this reunion is just you know the personalities were unbelievable, and they still are, but that's you, know, you become pretty tight, and just you think of Eddie Eddie Olchuk stretches every morning and. Just if you, you wish you could have a recording on all that stuff because the guy's taking yeah. heat and going back and forth and just the funny, you know, banner is, is the best. Kipper holding court. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, the best. Quite simply, it was, uh, was and, and still is and always will be a, a, a privilege. And uh, from the, the first time I stepped on the ice wearing uh, that Ranger uh, jersey back in 91, 
and I'll never forget. Obviously, it was the uh, you know uh, Mark was uh, introduced as the captain and and standing alongside uh, uh, Brian uh, and standing in front of Mike for all those years during the national anthem. There wasn't a game that went by that I didn't think about uh, how lucky I was to be a part of this group and uh, to wear that uniform and and be in New York and. Uh, um, it's just uh, something that, uh, you know, I think collectively we're just all so proud and, and feel so very fortunate and humbled to, to have had that opportunity because it certainly is a privilege. I've heard Adam describe that before and, and the word privilege is probably the best, best way to describe it. You, you do know it at the time, but I don't think you can ever really take an accounting on how lucky you are to be playing, you know, this great game professionally. In, in a town like this, um, at a moment like we had, um, it's tough to reproduce. Every team has its own challenges and, and great moments, but um, I wouldn't trade you know that time for anything in that year. It was the funnest, most fulfilling year that I've ever experienced in and out of the sport. And uh, you know, I guess winning is always a good thing, but to have lifelong friends that have been you know a big part of your growing up is a pretty big deal. For me, it was just fortunate is, is all I can really think of because <clears throat> I grew up in Connecticut thinking that the NHL was, was just what other people did. You know, it was a fantasy and then you get drafted and you realize you got an opportunity and it's by the New York Rangers. It's by an original six team, a couple hours from my parents' home, from where I grew up. Um, we came at a moment in time where there were still old arenas. There was still a lot of fans that had been there for 40 years, yeah. 50 years, Not that passed on their tickets, and there were multiple generations of fans. Um, just the timing of our time, you know, in yeah, New York uh, to be Sounds there, good. and it's just fortunate. You know, I only got one shot at the finals, yeah. uh, you know, and we were able to win it here. and and win it uh, as a New York Ranger and do it at Madison Square Garden, just very fortunate.